At the expiration of two years from Abraham's going out of the fire, that is, in the 52nd year of his life, behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon the throne. And the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in a valley opposite the king's furnace. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Abram coming forth from the furnace and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword and then sprang to the king with his sword when the king fled from the man for he was afraid. And while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head and the egg became a great river. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died. And the king took flight with three men who were before him and he escaped. And the king looked at these men and they were clothed in princely dresses as the garments of kings and had the appearance and majesty of kings. And while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king and there came forth from the egg a young bird which came before the king and flew at his head and plucked out the king's eye and the king was grieved at the sight and he awoke out of his sleep and his spirit was agitated and he felt a great terror and in the morning the king rose from his couch in fear and he ordered all the wise men and magicians to come before him when the king related his dream to them and a wise servant of the king, whose name was Anuki, answered the king, This is nothing else but the evil of Abram and his seed which will spring up against my lord and king in the latter days. And behold, the day will come when Abram and his seed and the children of his household will war with my king and they will smite all the king's hosts and his troops. And as to what thou hast said concerning free men which thou didst see like unto thyself, and which did escape, this means that only thou wilt escape with free kings from the kings of the earth, who will be with thee in battle. And that which thou sawest of the river which turned to an egg as at first, and the young bird plucking out of thine eye, this means nothing else but the seed of Abraham, which will slay the king in latter days. This is my king's dream, and this is its interpretation, and the dream is true. And the interpretation which thou servant has given thee is right. Now therefore, my king, Surely thou knowest that it is now fifty-two years since thy sages saw this at the birth of Abram. And if my king will suffer Abram to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days that Abram liveth, neither thou nor thy kingdom will be established, for this was known formerly at his birth. And why will not my king slay him? that his evil may be kept from thee in the latter days. And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anuki, and he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Abram, and bring him before the king to suffer death. Hasten, rise up and save thy soul, that thou mayest not die with the hands of the king. For thus did he see in a dream concerning thee, and thus did Anuki interpret it. And thus also did Anuki advise the king concerning thee. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Eliezer. And Abram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah and his son Shem. And he concealed himself there and found a place of safety. King's servants came to Abram's house to seek him, but they could not find him. And they searched throughout the country and he was not to be found. And they went and searched in every direction and he was not to be met with. And when the king's servants could not find Abram, they returned to the king. But the king's anger against Abram was stilled, as they did not find him. And the king drove from his mind this matter concerning Abram. And Abram was concealed in Noah's house for one month, until the king had forgotten this matter. But Abram was still afraid of the king. 
and Terah came to see Abram his son secretly in the house of Noah and Terah was very great in the eyes of the king does thou not know that the king thinketh to slay me and to annihilate my name from the earth by the advice of his wicked counsellors now whom hast thou here and what hast thou in this land arise let us go together in the land of Canaan that we may be delivered from his hand lest thou perish also through him in the latter days does thou not know or hast thou not heard that it is not through the love that Nimrod giveth thee all this honour but it is only for his benefit that he bestoweth all of his goods upon thee and if he do unto thee greater good than this surely these are only vanities of the world for wealth and riches cannot avail in a day of wrath and anger now therefore hearken to my voice and let us arise and go to the land of Canaan out of the reach of injury from Nimrod and serve thou the Lord who created thee in the earth and it will be well with thee and cast away all the vain things which thou pursuest and Abram ceased to speak when Noah and his son Shem answered Terah true is the word which Abram has said unto thee and Terah hearkened to the voice of his son Abram and Terah did all that Abram said for this was from the Lord that the king should not cause Abram's death and Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Aran, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from ur Kazdim to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceedingly good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with God and men, and that the Lord his God was with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram, and he taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And these men remained with Abram in his house, and they adhered to him. And Abram remained in the land three years. And at the expiration of three years, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee forth from Ur Kazdim and delivered thee from the hands of all thine enemies. And now therefore, if thou wilt hearken to my voice and keep my commandments, my statutes and my laws, then will I cause thy enemies to fall before thee and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven and I will send my blessing upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. Arise now, take thy wife and all belonging to thee, and go to the land of Canaan, and remain there, and I will there be unto thee for a God, and I will bless thee. And Abram rose, and took his wife, and all belonging to him, and he went to the land of Canaan, as the Lord had told him. And Abram was fifty-five years old when he went from Haran. And Abram came to the land of Canaan and dwelt in the midst of the city. And he there pitched his tent amongst the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram when he came to the land of Canaan and said to him, This is the land which I gave unto thee and to thy seed after thee forever. And I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. And Abram built an altar in the place where God had spoken to him. At that time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in that year Noah died, which was the fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram. And all the days that Noah lived were 950 years, and he died. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him, and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Nahor, Abram's brother, and Terah, his father, and Lot, the son of Haran, and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran. And in the tenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, 
there was war between Nimrod, king of Shinar, and Shador Laomer, king of Elam. And Nimrod came to fight with Shador Laomer and to subdue him. For Shador Laomer was at that time one of the princes of the hosts of Nimrod. And when all the people at the tower were dispersed, and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth, Shadola Omar went to the land of Elam and reigned over it and had rebelled against his lord. And in those days, when Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Shadola Omar. And Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about 700,000 men, and went against Shador Laomer. And Shador Laomer went out to meet him with 5,000 men. And they prepared for battle in the valley of Babel, which is between Elam and Shinar. And all those kings fought there. And Nimrod and his people were smitten before the people of Shador Laomer. And there fell from Nimrod's men about 600,000. And Mardon the king's son fell amongst them. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land. And he was under subjection to Shador Laomer for a long time. And Shador Laomer returned to his land and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him, to Arioch, king of Alassa, and to Tidal, king of Goyim, and made a covenant with them, and they were all obedient to his commands. And it was in the fifteenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the seventieth year of the life of Abram. And the Lord appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out from ur Kazdim to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me, and be perfect, and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for inheritance from the river Mitzrayim unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age, and the fourth generation shall return here in this land and shall inherit it forever. And Abram built an altar and he called upon the name of the Lord who appeared to him and he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to the Lord. At that time, Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother and his father's household. And Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran. And Abram dwelt in Haran five years. And many of the people of Haran, about 72 men, followed Abram. And Abram taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And he taught them to know the Lord. In those days, the Lord appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to him, Behold, I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, from thy birthplace, and from thy father's house, to the land which I have shown thee, to give it to thee, and to thy children. For in that land will I bless thee, and make thee a great nation, and make thy name great. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, thou, thy wife, and all belonging to thee, also every one born in thy house, and all the souls that thou hast made in Haran, and bring them out with thee from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose and took his wife Sarai, and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and the souls which they had made in Haran. And they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan, according to the word of the Lord. And Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. And he came to the land of Canaan, according to the word of the Lord to Abram. And he pitched his tent and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre. And with him was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him. And the Lord again appeared to Abram and said, To thy seed will I give this land. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Mamre. 
And in that year there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Canaan, and the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Abram and all belonging to him rose and went down to Egypt on account of the famine. And when they were at the brook Mitzrayim, they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road. And Abram and Sarai were walking at the border of the brook Mitzrayim. And Abram beheld his wife Sarai that she was very beautiful. Since God has created thee with such a beautiful countenance, I am afraid of the Egyptians, lest they should slay me and take thee away, for the fear of the Most High is not in these places. Surely then thou shalt do this, say art thou my sister, to all that may ask thee, in order that it may be well with me, and that we may live and not be put to death. And Abram commanded the same to all those that came with him to Egypt on account of the famine. Also, his nephew Lot, he commanded, saying, If the Egyptians ask thee concerning Sarai, say she is the sister of Abram. And yet, with all these orders, Abram did not put confidence in them, but he took Sarai and placed her in a chest, and concealed it amongst their vessels. For Abram was greatly concerned about Sarai on the account of the wickedness of the Egyptians. And Abram and all belonging to him rose up from the brook Mitzrayim, and came to Egypt, and they had scarcely entered the gates of the city when the guard stood up to them. Give tithe to the king for what you have, and then you may come into the town. And Abram and those that were with him did so. And Abram with the people that were with him came to Egypt, and when they came they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Egyptians saw the chest. And the king's servants approached Abram, saying, what hast thou here in this chest which we have not seen? Hmm? Now, open thou the chest and give tithe to the king of all that it contains. This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. It is a chest of precious stones. Give us a tenth thereof. All that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Abram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force. And they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king beheld Sarai, they were struck with admiration at her beauty. And all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see Sarai, for she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen. And they praised Sarai to the king. And Pharaoh ordered her to be brought, and the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house, and Abram grieved on account of his wife, and he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time and said, O oh, Papa God, thou didst tell my Lord Abram to go from his land and from his father's house to the land of Canaan. And thou did promise to do well with him if he would perform thy command. Now behold, we have done that which thou have had command us. And we left our land and our families and we went to a strange land and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine. And this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor. And do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai. And behold, an angel of the Lord was standing over them. And he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for the Lord has heard thy prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, Yo, damsel, who is that man to you that bring you come? He's my brother. And at that time, the king sent to Abram, silver and gold and precious stones in abundance 
together with cattle, men servants, and maid servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought. And he sat in the court of the king's house, and the king greatly exalted Abram on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her, when the angel smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground, and acted thus to him the whole night, and the king was terrified. And the angel on that night smote heavily all the servants of the king and his whole household on account of Sarai. And there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house. The Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Nobody can tell me nothing. I definitely that I'm telling me this to me. And he removed himself at some distance from her and spoke pleasing words to her. I pray, something skittish I go on. How would a man never come with you? This man is my husband. And I said to you that he is my brother. But I was afraid. Lest thou put him to death through wickedness. God forbid. And the king kept away from Sarai. And the plagues of the angel of the Lord ceased from him and his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sarai. And the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning, the king called for Abraham and said to him, What kind of cross is this brother bring down for me? Why well, never tell me say I'm sister? Me nearly tied the knot. What kind of plague him bringing on my whole soul? All the dog town cat, your fam, your cause, your bro, your brother, take your wife and leave. I will save everybody to dead in my kingdom. And Pharaoh took more cattle, men servants and maid servants, and silver and gold to give to Abraham. And he returned unto him Sarai his wife. And the king took a maiden, whom he begat by his concubines, and he gave her to Sarai for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, Yo, my daughter, it's better for you to be a handmaid in this man's house, you know, more than be a mistress in my house. After all, and them evil will come down upon me, and the account of his woman. And Abram arose, and he and all belonging to him, went away from Egypt. And Pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him and all that went with him. And Abram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Abram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks and herds and tents. For the Lord was bountiful to them on account of Abram. And when Abram was dwelling in the land, the herdsmen of Lot quarreled with the herdsmen of Abram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land, and the land could not bear them on account of their cattle. And when Abram's herdsmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the fields of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily. And they came to Abram and quarreled with him on the account of Lot's herdsmen. And Abram said to Lot, What is this thou art doing to me, to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land, that thou orderest thy herdsmen to feed thy cattle in the fields of other people? Dost thou not know that I am a stranger in this land, amongst the children of Canaan? And why wilt thou do this unto me? And Abram quarrelled daily with Lot on account of this. But Lot would not listen to Abram. And he continued to do the same. And the inhabitants of the land came and told Abram, How long wilt thou be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech thee, let there be no more quarrelling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray thee, separate from me. Go and choose a place where thou mayst dwell with thy cattle, and all belongeth to thee, but keep thyself at a distance from me, thou and thy household, and be not afraid in going from me. For if anyone do any injury to thee, let me know, and I will avenge thy cause from him, only remove from me. And when Abram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose and lifted up his eyes towards the plain of Jordan, and he saw that the whole of this place was well watered, and good for man as well as affording pasture for the cattle. And Lot went from Abram to that place. 
And he there pitched his tent, and he dwelt in Sodom, and they were separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And he pitched his tent there, and Abram remained in that place many years. At that time, Shadol Omar, king of Elam, sent to all the neighboring kings, to Nimrod, king of Shinar, who was then under his power, and to Didal, king of Goyim, and to Arioch, king of Elasa, with whom he made a covenant, saying, Come up to me and assist me, that we may smite all the towns of Sodom and its inhabitants, for they have rebelled against me these thirteen years. And these four kings went up with all their camps, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went as they were, and smote every man they found in their road. And the five kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeba, king of Zeboim, Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, and Bela, king of Zoah, went out to meet them, and they all joined together in the valley of Sidim. And these nine kings made war in the valley of Sidim, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah were smitten before the kings of Elam. And the valley of Sedim was full of lime pits, and the kings of Elam pursued the kings of Sodom. And the kings of Sodom with their camps fled and fell into the lime pits, and all that remained went to the mountain for safety. And the five kings of Elam came after them and pursued them to the gates of Sodom, and they took all that there was in Sodom. And they plundered all the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and his property, and they seized all the goods of the cities of Sodom, and they went away. And Eunuch, Abram's servant, who was in the battle, saw this and told Abram all that the kings had done to the cities of Sodom, and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Abram heard this, and he rose up with about 318 men that were with him, and that night pursued these kings and smote them, and they all fell before Abram and his men, and there was none remaining. But the four kings who fled, and they went each his own road. And Abram recovered all the property of Sodom, and he also recovered Lot and his property, his wives and little ones, and all belonging to him, so that Lot lacked nothing. And when he returned from smiting these kings, he and his men passed the valley of Sidim, where the kings had made war together. And Bera, king of Sodom, and the rest of his men that were with him, went out from the lime pits into which they had fallen to meet Abram and his men. And Adonazadek, king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, went out with his men to meet Abram and his people with bread and wine. And they remained together in the valley of Melech. And Adonazadek blessed Abram. And Abram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemies. For Adonizedek was a priest before the Most High. And all the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah who were there, with their servants, approached Abram and begged of him to return them their servants whom he had made captive, and to take unto himself all the property. And Abram answered the kings of Sodom, saying, As the Lord liveth, who created heaven and earth, and who redeemed my soul from all affliction, and who delivered me this day from my enemies, and gave them into my hand, I will not take anything belonging to you, that you may not boast tomorrow, saying, Abraham became rich from our property that he saved. For the Lord my God, in whom I trust, said unto me, Thou shalt lack nothing, for I will bless thee in all the works of thy hands. And now therefore, behold, here is all belonging to you. Take it and go. As the Lord liveth, I will not take from you from a living soul down to a shoe tie or a thread accepting the expense of the food of those who went out with me to battle, as also the portions of the men who went with me, Anna, Ashkol, and Mamri, they and their men, as well as those also who had remained to watch the baggage. They shall take their portion of the spoil. And the kings of Sodom gave Abram according to all that he had said, and they pressed him to take of whatever he chose, but he would not. And he sent away the kings of Sodom and the remainder of their men. And he gave them orders about Lot. And they went to their respective places. And Lot, his brother's son, he also sent away with his property. And he went with them. 
And Lot returned to his home, to Sodom. And Abram and his people returned to their home, to the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And at that time, the Lord again appeared to Abram in Hebron. And he said to him, Do not fear, thy reward is very great before me, for I will not leave thee until I have shall multiply thee, and bless thee, and made thy seed like the stars in heaven, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And I will give unto thy seed all these lands that thou seest with thine eyes. To them will I give them for an inheritance forever. Only be strong and do not fear. Walk before me and be perfect. And Sarai, the daughter of Haran, Abram's wife, was still barren in those days. She did not bear to Abram either son or daughter. And when she saw that she bare no children, she took her handmaid Hagar, whom Pharaoh had given her, and she gave her to Abram, her husband, for a wife. For Hagar learned all the ways of Sarai, as Sarai taught her. She was not in any way deficient in following her good ways. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, here is my handmaid Hagar. Go to her that she may bring forth upon my knees, that I may also obtain children through her. And at the end of ten years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the eighty-fifth year of Abram's life, Sarai gave Hagar unto him. And Abram hearkened to the voice of his wife Sarai. And he took his handmaid Hagar. And Abram came to her, and she conceived. And when Hagar saw that she had conceived, she rejoiced greatly and her mistress was despised in her eyes. And she said within herself, This can only be that I am better before God than Sarai, my mistress. For all the days that my mistress has been with my Lord, she did not conceive. But me, the Lord has caused in so short a time to conceive by him. And when Sarai saw that Hagar had conceived by Abram, Sarai was jealous of her handmaid. And Sarai said within herself, This is surely nothing else, but she must be better than I am. And Sarai said unto Abram, Ah, Abram, my wrong be upon thee, O. Hmm. For at this time when thou did pray before the Lord for children, why didn't thou pray on my account that the Lord should give me seed from thee? And when I speak to Agar in thy present, she despised my word because she has conceived and thou shalt say nothing to her. May the Lord judge between me and thee for what thou hast done to me. And Abram said to Sarai, Behold, thy handmaid is in thy hand. Do unto her as it seemed good in thine eyes. And Sarai afflicted her and Hagar fled from her to the wilderness. And an angel of the Lord found her in the place where she had fled, by a well, and he said to her, Do not fear, for I will multiply thy seed, for thou shalt bear a son, thou shalt call his name Ishmael. Now then, return to Sarai, thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hand. And Hagar called the place of that well, Belahairoi. It is between Kadesh and the wilderness of Bered. And Hagar at that time returned to her master's house. And at the end of days, Hagar bare a son to Abram. And Abram called his name Ishmael. And Abram was 86 years old when he begat him. And Abram, the son of Terah, was then 99 years old. And at that time, the Lord appeared to him, and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will greatly multiply thy seed. And this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee. At eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And now therefore thy name shall be no more called Abram, but Abraham. And thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah. For I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, 
that you shall become a great nation and kings shall come forth from you. And Abraham rose and did all that God ordered him. And he took the men of his household and those bought with his money and he circumcised them as the Lord had commanded him. And there was not one left whom he did not circumcise. Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. Thirteen years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And in the third day, Abraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun, during the pain of his flesh. And the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Mamre and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him. And he was sitting at the door of the tent and he lifted his eyes and saw and lo, three men were coming from a distance and he rose up and ran to meet them and he bowed down to them and brought them into his house and he said to them if now i have found favor in your sight turn in and eat a morsel of bread and he pressed them and they turned in and he gave them water and they washed their feet and he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent and abraham ran and took a calf tender and good and he hastened to kill it and gave it to his servant Eliezer to dress and Abraham came to Sarah into the tent and he said to her make ready quickly three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat and she did so and Abraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk beef and mutton and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done and they did eat and when they had done eating one of them said to him i will return to thee according to the time of life and sarah thy wife shall have a son and it was at that time at the end of a year and four months of abraham's dwelling in the land of the philistines in gerar that god visited sarah and the lord remembered her and she conceived and bare a son to abraham and Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac at eight days old, as God had commanded Abraham to do unto his seed after him. And Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah ninety years old, when Isaac was born to them. And the child grew up, and he was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Isaac was weaned. And Shem and Eber and all the great people of the land and Abimelech king of the Philistines and his servants and Phicol, the captain of his host came to eat and drink and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his sons Isaac being weaned. Also Terah the father of Abraham and Nahor his brother came from Haran they and all belonging to them for they greatly rejoiced on hearing that a son had been born to Sarah. And they came to Abraham, and they ate and drank at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of Isaac's being weaned. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, was grown up in those days. He was fourteen years old when Sarah bare Isaac to Abraham. And God was with Ishmael, the son of Abraham. And he grew up, and he learned to use the bow and became an archer. And when Isaac was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. And Ishmael came to Isaac and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow and drew it and put the arrow in it and intended to slay Isaac. And Sarah saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son Isaac. And it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham and said to him, Cast out this bond woman and her son. For her son cannot be a with my son. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And he rose up early in the morning. And he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water which he gave to Hagar. And sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness. And they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran with the inhabitants of the wilderness. And Ishmael was an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness a long time.